Dear friends, a very warm welcome to each of you to the family altar. We have a great God and a great faith. Yes, the situation around us are life threatening, but we have a God who saves us from all dangers and all that is there in the world is lesser than compared to what God is. God is great. God is marvelous. So maybe together as family members worship this living and wonderful God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we sing the first hymn. shall be showers of blessing, this is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. Showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops down the sun falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor your word. Showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops on the surface. We Showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Most he drops down the star falling, but for the showers we Great and merciful God, your life is the source of all life. Your mercy is our only hope. Your eyes watch over all your creatures. You know the secrets of our hearts. By your life-giving spirit, draw us into your presence, that we may worship you in the true life of your spirit, who lives moved by your love, through him who has led us to your heart of love, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace, that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. You would truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from now on in his holy ways, make your humble confession to the compassionate God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. May we together say the common confessional prayer. O God, o God of, of compassion, 
we confess that we have sinned against you and our sisters and brothers. We have not been true followers of your new way in Christ. We have not shared in your liberating work in the world. We have fallen short of your glory. In your great compassion, make us clean from our sin. Set us free in the joy of your spirit, that we may serve you with new lives through Jesus Christ, who gave his life, that we might live in peace with you and with all creation. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Savior of the world, the refuge of the repentant, forgives and strengthens all who truly seek his grace. He accepts us as his sons and daughters and sets us free from the bondage of our past. For Christ died and rose to new life, that we might all share his wholeness in an abundant life. As God's own people, be merciful in action, kind in heart, humble in mind. Be always ready to forgive as freely as God has forgiven us. And above everything else, be loving and never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Having been forgiven and made bold through our peacemaker, let us live together in peace. God's peace challenges us and guides us towards the acts of justice, peace and integration of the whole creation. Let us say, Shalom to one another and greet each other with a sign of reconciliation and peace. The peace of the Lord be with you and also be with you. Shalom my friend, shalom my friend, shalom. Bible reading would be done now. Today's Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 28 to 32. Book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. And afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Here in the Old Testament lesson, praise be to thee, O God. The epistle reading for today has been taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 26. Chapter 5, verses 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Here ends the epistle reading. Praise be to thee, O God. Gospel reading is taken from Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. John, chapter 14, 15 to 21. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Here ends the reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Alleluia, 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 praise the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Praise the Lord.
Good morning to you all and as we continue to meditate on God's word this morning the theme that is given to us for our meditation is promise of the Holy Spirit promise of the Holy Spirit this theme is very familiar to us because we constantly recollect the promises of God and also Holy Spirit is a topic that is always talked about in churches but when we say promise of the Holy Spirit the first aspect that comes to our mind or sometimes the only aspect that comes to our mind is the speaking of tongues the speaking of tongues is always synonymous with the Holy Spirit whenever we mention the Holy Spirit it's the speaking of tongues which comes to our mind but that is where lies our under the problem of understanding the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not to be understood only in terms of speaking in tongues with reference to Acts of the Apostles where the disciples of Christ the Apostles were given the gift of speaking in different tongues so that they can continue to declare God's works to the people of different languages and so our understanding generally of the Holy Spirit is always or mostly limited only to speaking in tongues but in doing so we have in many ways diminished the role of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in human history and in our own lives so when we talk about the promise of the Holy Spirit God's promise of the Holy Spirit to us is not something that is limited only to the Pentecostal event but when we look back in the Old Testament the Spirit of God is found hovering over the waters the Spirit of God is in the midst of chaos and it's in and the Spirit of God is part of creation and so the Holy Spirit continues the demonstration of God's presence and the interpreting of God's power in the lives of people right through the Old Testament in the lives of the prophets the intervention of God in the life of the prophets the intervention of God in the life of kings and leaders and so the Holy Spirit is not limited only to the Pentecostal event because to understand the work of the Holy Spirit as only a gift of speaking tongues would greatly diminish the work and power of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is God's continuity in the life of people so as we understand this theme promise of the Holy Spirit the theme is understood in the purpose for which God has promised us the Holy Spirit why has God promised us the Holy Spirit what does that mean to us and to understand that we have three readings Joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 32 Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 26 and John chapter 14 verse 6, 15 to 21 these three readings are only few examples which we can use to understand the purpose and the promise of the Holy Spirit the Old Testament is full of instances but for our morning meditation we have been given these three passages which will help us to understand the purpose 
for which the Holy Spirit is promised to us. What are these? Joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 32. God promises the people of Israel through Joel, through prophet Joel, that in the future days, in the days to come, your sons and daughters will prophesy. When I utter the word prophecy, I'm sure that there are many things going on in your minds. The first thing that probably is going on in your minds right now, when I say the term prophecy, is probably future telling or fortune telling. What will happen to me tomorrow? What will happen to my life next year? What will happen if I do this? A kind of a fortune telling attitude when we understand, when we think of prophecy. Prophecy is not about fortune telling. The Old Testament is very clear about what prophecy means. Prophets and prophecy are people and messages meant for correction and edification. Edification of the present and edification of the future. Correction of the present and correction of the future. That is what prophecy meant. Prophecy meant edification. So when Joel is telling the people of Israel, Prophet Joel says, Look, God is going to do something in the future. God is going to edify. Your sons and daughters will become means of edification. And Joel doesn't stop there. The promise of the Holy Spirit is also found in old people, in elders. The elders will dream dreams. And the young people will have visions. All these words are greatly underrated in today's understanding. Prophecies are limited only to uh, future telling or fortune telling. Dreams are only understood in terms of psychoanalysis as just mere products of the mind. Visions are limited to hallucinations and imaginations. We are not talking about hallucinations and visions in terms of imaginations. We are not talking about psychoanalytical study of dreams. Because the word dreams and visions used in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32, refers to God's intervention. Dreams in the Old Testament are words which represent God's intervention when God intervenes. And those are interpreted as dreams. Visions are understood as those instances and situations in people's lives when they are suddenly encountered with a purpose in their life, purpose that is in line with God. People who have received a call of God, who receive God's call, suddenly receive a vision through that call. And that vision is not a hallucination or an imagination. It is a clear-cut purpose. The Old Testament is full of such examples where people receive God's call and they receive a purpose. And that is what we call as a mission and a vision. So the promise of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, according to Joel, is a promise for the future generation. Joel is telling that for the sons and daughters to become agents of edification, it is necessary that the old people, that the elders have dreams. And what are these dreams that we are talking about? These dreams are God's interventions. The role of an elder or elders in the family and church is to make sure that they pass on God's intervention in the life of the younger generation. To make sure that they pass on God's mission to the life in the life of the future generation. To make sure that the future generation inherits God's purpose. That is the role of the elders. When we say old people, that doesn't mean that old people have no place in the future. Joel is very specific. Prophet Joel says, old people have a role to play in the future of the community. They have to pass on God's work to the younger generation. And young people will see visions. A vision is something that we can understand in realizing God's purpose. It's a revelation of God's purpose. And young people, it's important that young people get that realization that they have a vision for God, that they have been called for a purpose by God. 
that is the work of the holy spirit that is why the holy spirit is promised the second promise the purpose of the promise of the holy spirit can be found in galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 26 it is a very familiar reading for us because it is about the fruits of the spirit paul talks about the fruits of the spirit but before he talks to the galatian church about the fruits of the spirit paul talks about the fruits of the flesh so first paul lays down the qualities of the fruits of the flesh and then he differentiates it from the fruits of the spirit so the fruits of the spirit are in contrast to the fruits of the flesh and that is why the fruits of the flesh namely love joy peace patience kindness self control long suffering all these qualities are in contrast to the flesh or contrast to the fruits of the flesh that which is evident in the flesh and flesh here paul represents anything that is against god so the fruits of the spirit are those attributes and qualities that come out of following in the ways of god it's those characteristics that arise out of doing god's will and those qualities and attributes that come out of going against god's will are terms are termed as fruits of the flesh so the fruits of the spirit is to make sure that god's will is evident in our lives to make sure that to tell us that to affirm that we are doing god's will and the only way of knowing that is by knowing the fruits so if our fruits are the fruits of flesh then we are not doing god's will what if our fruits are the fruits of the spirit then we are doing god's will if our actions are against love and joy and peace and patience then we are not doing god's will but if our actions in our lives are in line with love joy peace patience kindness long suffering self control then we are doing god's will so the purpose of the holy spirit is to make sure that we are doing god's will that is in the fruits of the spirit the third and most important aspect of the purpose of the holy spirit or the purpose of the promise of the holy spirit is found in john chapter 14 verse 16 to 17 these are the words of jesus christ when he told his disciples that after he goes after he finishes his earthly uh, salvific work after he finishes his salvific work on the cross he will send a helper the helper here is referred to as the advocate john chapter 14 verse 16 and the holy spirit here is termed as the helper the advocate the counselor and that is where we would like to stop we would like to stop there by saying the holy spirit is my comforter my helper and therefore god is my helper and my comforter but there is something that we have always missed in understanding the holy spirit the holy spirit today largely in christianity i wouldn't say christianity not in general christianity but largely in christian media what we see is the commodification of the holy spirit and what is it what is this commodification of the holy spirit it is treating holy spirit as a commodity as a power as a shakti as a privilege that's why john says the holy spirit is our comforter verse 16 john chapter 14 verse 16 but then john also goes on to record what jesus said that the holy spirit is a spirit of truth the spirit of truth is the comforter the attributes of the holy spirit is finding god's advocacy finding god's help in truth it is not a spirit of falsehood it is not a spirit that goes against god's will the spirit of truth the help the comfort comes from the holy spirit and in realizing the spirit of truth in realizing truth to understand that 
we just need to relate the work of the holy spirit with relation to truth the holy spirit does not advocate injustice the holy spirit does not advocate falsehood the holy spirit advocates truth the holy spirit is an advocate of truth so if i am doing something that is against god's will which is unjust unjust i cannot call myself saying that i have the holy spirit and the holy spirit is my helper because the holy spirit will not be my helper if i am doing an injustice the holy spirit will not be my comforter if i am going against god's will i cannot live a life that is against god's will bearing fruits of the flesh and go on to say that i have the holy spirit because the holy spirit is not an advocacy of falsehood but of truth it is a spirit of truth john chapter 14 verse 17 and that is where we arrive at a very very pertinent problem in christianity today in certain sections of christianity and christian media today the commodification of the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a single entity that is a power or a shakti that can that is given to me as a privilege that i can control that i can give to whomever i want that is a largely la- biggest misunderstanding of the holy spirit the holy spirit is god god's continued presence in our lives in the form of the spirit of truth it is in truth that we are able to experience god's presence and the holy spirit if it is to be understood as a commodity which i can pass through electronic media which i can give it to you through the microphone which i can give through the television screen by saying touch the television television screen and you will receive the power of the holy spirit if the holy spirit is something as small as that then we are demeaning the work of god in our lives the holy spirit is not a commodity that can be passed on the holy spirit is the realization the power of the holy spirit the promise of the holy spirit is the realization of truth in our lives it is the realization that in truth by living in truth in the spirit of truth that god becomes our advocate that god becomes our comfort it is in truth that we find god's advocacy in our lives it is in truth that we find god's comfort in our life it is in truth that the spirit becomes holy spirit becomes meaningful in our lives so dear brothers and sisters in christ commodification of the holy spirit is a very very deviant form of understanding the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a separate entity it is not a power in itself or a shakti in itself the holy spirit is god the creator god the savior god and the comforter all working in us every day and it is the work of the holy spirit which enables us to live our life in truth because it is the spirit of truth so dear brothers and sisters in christ the pro- promise of the holy spirit is given to us god has promised us the holy spirit so that we can inherit a future where in our children can be can live a life of edification so that they don't make the mistakes of their previous of their previous generation so that the children don't make the mistakes of their forefathers and mothers so that the children become an edifying community a community that is corrected the holy spirit is given to us so that we can bear spirit uh, fruits of the spirit so that we can show forth the sp- fruits of the spirit the holy spirit is promised to us so that we can work together and live together in the spirit of truth and not in the spirit of falsehood so as we continue to live our life let us not narrow down our understanding of the holy spirit to just something very simple as speaking in tongues speaking in tongues is just one of those qualities which god enabled the disciples to proclaim god's works but the work of the holy spirit is much more than that the work of the holy spirit 
is profound in the lives of people. It continues the life of the community of the faithful. It is because of the work of the Holy Spirit that the faithful community is edified from one generation to the other. It is because of the work of the Holy Spirit that we realize what our fruits are. It is because of the work of the Holy Spirit that we realize whether we are living in the spirit of truth or living in the spirit of hypocrisy and falsehood. So may God help us to realize the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we continue to affirm God's promise of the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, we thank you that you have given your Holy Spirit to all people who believe in you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the realization that we are not custodians of your Spirit, but we are controlled by your Spirit. That you fill us with your Spirit and you control us, and it is not we who possess and control your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the realization that you have empowered us with your Holy Spirit so that we can bear fruits of righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the realization that your Holy Spirit is given to us so that we may edify the future generation. Continue to strengthen us, O Lord, and may your Spirit guide us and help us in our weaknesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we all say the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in, in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we enter into a time of intercessory prayers. We will be praying for the need of the hour. So the prayers are done to suit the occasion. And after every bidding, your response would be, hear our prayer. We pray for your church in this world at this time of COVID-19, that it may be obedient to your will and strong in spirit to show your love to those migrant workers, poor and the needy, who are abandoned at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and all the countries that they would be guided by thy Holy Spirit, that every decision that they take would be given top priority for the people and their health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the medical personnel, the doctors, the staff, and all other helpers that are involved in the medical field to bring solace and healing to those who are suffering. That we pray that they would be protected and guarded when they minister to the needy and particularly their family members who allowed their loved ones to take on this risky ministry at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the scientists that in their attempt to find a cure, they may be guided by thy wisdom and knowledge to find the right medicine to give confidence and courage to humanity which is now troubled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we commit our struggles and sufferings into your sons, 
wounded hands, her hopes and aspirations into his praying hands, her poor, hungry and exploited fellow human beings into his chest and caring hands, our living and departed into his hands that hold the key to the future. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Sacrifices with shouts of joy, and I will sing and make melody to the Lord. May we all together say the prayer of the presence. Be, be present, be present, be present Jesus, Jesus, you who I priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, lift up them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right, it is to, right to give, to give thanks, God, and thanks and praise. Truly it is right and good to glorify you at all times and in all places. By offering you our thanksgiving, O Lord, Holy Father, you spoke and the light shattered darkness. Order arose from the confusion. You breathed into the dust of the earth, and we were formed in your image. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us while we wandered. He met us as a refugee, a threatened child. He called us by name to live what is comfortable to be, his disciples, friends and partners. With his outstretched arms on the cross, and through his death he bore our sins, and through his resurrection, we are saved, and through the Holy Spirit, you brood over the chaos that we create, mothering us and shaping a new creation. You enlighten everyone coming into the world. You inspire the prophets and apostles to find the right word at the right time. You liberate, you equip and commission people for the continuance of your mission, to make everything new. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim and sing your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. On the same way, after supper, he took the cup. 
when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, Lord we, we commemorate your, your death, death on, on the, the cross. cross. We, we celebrate, celebrate your, your resurrection, resurrection and we, we await, await your coming. Eternal God, <clears throat> let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in tr truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then at last all peoples will be free, all divisions sealed, and with your whole creation we will sing your praise through your Son Jesus Christ, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray, our, our Father, Father in heaven, holy, holy be your name, your, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May we maintain a few moments in silence. May we prepare ourselves for the Holy Eucharist with our family members. May we all say the prayer of humble access together. We do not presume to come to, come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own mercies, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Jesus Christ? We seek to share your life, gracious God. When we lift the cup, do we not share in the life blood of Jesus Christ? We, we seek, seek to share, share your life, your life gracious. gracious God. participate 
in the Holy Eucharist, where the head of the family would distribute the elements and administer the wine. This is a spiritual act where we participate in spirit and in truth, acknowledging Jesus our Savior died for us. May we at this time say the thanksgiving prayer found on page 45. <clears throat> Having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, let us give thanks. May we together say this. Merciful God, God of, of all creation, creation Holy, Holy Father, Father of all people, heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ we united all things, things in his fullness. In his fullness. We, we join your whole creation in accepted praise of your bountiful goodness. goodness. You have now touched us with new life and filled us with new hope that your reign will come, that the hungry will be fed, that the oppressed will be set free from evil, that your reconciling what will be done, that love and faithfulness will meet together, that justice and peace will kiss each other, and the whole creation will be filled with your glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Let us pray. Our most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for yet another opportunity that you've given us to worship you as family members. We could possibly, would not have imagined a time like this in our life. But, O oh Father, you have brought us back to the family altar. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege, the responsibility of the breaking the bread with the family members. And we acknowledge you, O oh Lord, this has become possible because of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, dear Lord, as we heard from your word, as we have listened to the scriptures that were read for us, O oh loving Lord, you are the greatest host. You minister to us. You take care of us. You meet us in our needs and meet with us with your provision. Loving Father in heaven, at this point of time, we very specially bring to thy throne of grace all those doctors and nurses and the medical workers, O oh dear Lord. We pray in that risky situation, O oh dear Lord, when they minister to the victims of COVID-19. O oh Father, it's our prayer that you would protect them, that you would protect their family members, that, O oh Father, at the end of it, they would triumphantly say, Lord, I have done all that you gave to me with love and affection to those in need. Oh, Father, let that be their joy. Let that protection be a testimony to each of the family members where the medical workers, the doctors and nurses come from. And we thank you, dear Lord. We also at this time, O oh Lord, unitedly pray to you Forgive our sins, O oh Father. Forgive our sins and trespasses. We have gone away from your word. We have questioned your word. We found fault with your word. We thought that we are sufficient in ourselves. O oh Father in heaven, now we are exper expressing, experiencing how helpless we are. How helpless we are in the present situation. Father in heaven, the governments are wondering what to do. The medical workers are doing their best. 
the individuals and the families are at the grip of fear. But, O oh Father, in all these things, instead of fear, you gave us faith. Instead of timidity, you gave us the spirit of belonging to you as daughters and sons. Instead of, O oh Lord, going through despondency and depression, you have lifted us up through your word, through the ministry of the word, through you, what your Lord is singing and meditating upon your word. Father, we thank you that you are there to minister to us. You are the host. You are ministering to us. Help us to receive this ministry. Help us to acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. We have now come to that point. As individuals, we have come to that point. As families, we have come to that point. As communities, we have come to that point. As a church, we have come to that point where we have none but Jesus Christ who can be of help to us. In total submission and faith, we turn to you, Lord. Accept us with our families. Accept each one of us. We have failures. We have weaknesses. Father in heaven knows everything. So, Lord, we come to you through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Submit ourselves, our families, our loved ones, our relatives far and near. Bless everyone, O oh Father. We pray for the entire world. Let there be joy, O oh Father, at the face of every single individual that, that COVID-19 is subdued by a right medicine, by the right presence of God Emmanuel with us. O oh Father in heaven, be with us, bless us, lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and always. Amen. Amen.